Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the time of our worship we've heard in your presence, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who is here. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And Lord, we commit this time of your word. I humbly submit to your guidance, Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every hearer of the word of God. I pray for um, open heart, faith to believe and receive your word. I think for liberty in this place, liberty in the spirit, liberty over every person in the name of Jesus. Whoever have, has come with the spirit of heaviness, we speak liberty and praise in their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, we went through the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. And um, we saw that Jesus fasted for days and was tested in the wilderness. Um, and that was part of the preparation for the ministry. And today we're proceeding with, with, from verse 12 to 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 to 17. The Herod of God. So let's read Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 to 17. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Verse 15. The land of uh, Zebulun and the land of Naphtal, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From the from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is at hand. Today, from this passage, I want us to focus um, on the message and the recipient of the message. I want to focus on the message and the recipient of the message. Now, Jesus starts his public ministry in Galilee. Jesus starts his public ministry in Galilee. When John had finished his ministry of preparing the way of the Lord, verse 12, we see that when John was arrested, then Jesus leaves Nazareth. And that was marking a new season of Jesus' ministry. John came to prepare the way for Christ. And now Jesus knew that this is the time to start the ministry. Now Jesus goes to live, to dwell in, in Capernaum, a place called Capernaum. It's by the Sea of Galilee. And it's in the territory of of uh, Zebulon and Naphtal. Now, these names are not put in the Bible for just, you know, there is a reason. And we're going to see why. The, and it, that's why I said we focus also on the, on the recipient of the message and the people of um, Capernaum, which was the territory of Zebulon and Naphtal. Let's see Capernaum the territory of Zebulun in Naphtali. Now, when you go, you read in the book of Joshua, chapter 19, verse 10 to 16, to 16, you see that when Joshua and children of Israel entered in the promised land, the children of Israel were allocated their area. Every tribe with their people they were allocated territories, the land. So uh, Zabulon were given their portion. Then 
also the, the tribe of Naphtal, they were given their portion. And their portion, the, the Capernaum located at the west shore of the Sea of Galilee. And Gentiles and Jews dwelt in Capernaum. It's very important that you follow from it carefully. You must be wondering, why am I sharing this? There's a reason to why Christ moved from Nazareth and he went to um, Capernaum and did not go to Jerusalem, the capital city, to start his ministry. He starts in, in Capernaum. Um, now, let's see the prophets. Let's see the prophets, the prophets about um, Zebulun. The Zebulun prophets. Now, we see a prophetic word by Jacob. Go into the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 13. Let's go together. If you closely, please follow me. Let your mind be here. Genesis 49, verse 13. The Bible says, Zebulun shall dwell at the shore of the sea. He shall become a haven of ships, and his border shall be at Sidon. Do you see that? Now, imagine many years, the book of Genesis, when Zebulun was just a child of Jacob. And Jacob is dying. When he's about to die, he blesses his children. And each children receives a blessing. He speaks a word to them. And this is the word he spoke to Zabion. That you shall dwell at the shore of the sea. They shall become having ships. So, Galilee is in the territory of Zabion. So God saw it from afar. Let's go move on to see how Moses blesses Zabion as well. Deuteronomy 33, verse 18 to 19. Deuteronomy 33, verse 18 to 19. And of Zabion he said, Rejoice, Zabion, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. 19. They shall call peoples to their mountain. There they offer right sacrifice, for they draw from the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasures of the sand. You see the word sea coming again. After many years, after many years, Moses is blessing the descendants of Zebulun, who have, who have become many. Generation after generations, the descendants of Zabion are blessed with the same prophetic word. The same prophetic word. Now let's see Naphtali prophecy. Remember our text. Jesus moved in Capernaum, the territory of Zabion and Naphtali. Now let's see the prophecy about um, Naphtali. Deuteronomy 33, 23. Deuteronomy 23, 33, 23. Now Moses is blessing the descendants of Naphtali up before he died. And he says, and of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, set with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess the lake and the south. Possess what? The lake. Now, so the descent of Naphtali were allocated by the lake, by the sea of Galilee. Okay. Now, when Jesus comes, he comes to fulfill the prophecy. Let's go to, to back to Matthew 14 to 16. Verse 14. Matthew verse 4, verse 14. 16. And you see, why did Jesus start his ministry in Capernaum? 
saw that what was spoken by prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. So what was spoken by prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. What Isaiah prophesied, verse 15. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtal, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Did you see that? From Genesis to Deuteronomy, Joshua 19, the land is allocated. Isaiah prophesied 700 before the coming of Jesus Christ. He speaks a prophet that a Messiah will come. And this Messiah will come in the territory. We do, will come to the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. Now, by the time Jesus was being coming to minister, it was called Capernaum. Hallelujah. It was called Capernaum. And now there were Gentiles and other people. By the time it was coming. Now, Jesus comes in this place. Comes to Capernaum. So it was not by coincidence that he started the ministry in this place. It was spoken. Jacob spoke prophetically to his descendants. Fathers, when you speak blessing to your children, it's powerful. Especially when you speak God's word. And the word, you know, it's powerful. You see, Jacob blessing every child. Speaking the word of God. Speaking, it's powerful. Verse 16. The people dwelling in darkness have seen great light. And of those dwelling in the region and shadow of death on the light has the light a light has dawned now Jesus started, started, started his ministry Jesus started his ministry in Capernaum to fulfill what was written about him what was written about him he knew 700 years Jesus does not start his ministry in Jerusalem the capital city. He goes in Galilee, in town, a place called Capernaum, so that what was written might be fulfilled. He was born in Nazareth so that what was written might be fulfilled. That the Messiah will come. we born in Nazareth. But also, he bring a message to the Gentiles. So, the reason he started his ministry in Capernaum. It's so that what was spoken would be fulfilled. And people, we believe that he's the Messiah. But also, but also he wanted to preach to both Jews and the Gentiles. He wanted his message. When he started his message, when he started his ministry, he don't start with just Jews in Jerusalem. He started in the city where there are people. Now, Galilee, Capernaum was a place because of the sea. It's, um, um, it's a route that Gentiles, um, because of trade, they would come in that area, but also settled. In part of Galilee, there was um, Syrians who lived. There were other Gentiles who lived in that area. And um, Jesus reaches out to Gentiles and Jewish, he starts his ministry, preaching in the synagogue, preaching in towns at the show. And um, next week we'll see how he calls his disciples in the same place. And the Bible says he dwelled, he did not just preach, he stayed in that place, Capernaum. That was, he stayed for some times. It was the base of his ministry. Therefore, it was a, it was a strategic place to start his ministry. People of God, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? Did you know that one day you'll be here in this place? 
when you were born, when you were five, when you were 10 years old, when you were 15. Of course, there are some, some people who are born here anyway. <laughs> I'm talking about even those who are born here, they didn't know they would be born here. <laughs> they are born here because their parents came here. Even those who are citizens of this nation, they don't choose to be here. God ordained your life. Anyway, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 12. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 12. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. I want you to see that God has a plan for you. If he knew about um, Naphtal, Zabulon, many years through Jacob, Genesis, and a prophetic word is spoken to him after 400 years later or more than 400 years later Moses speaks to the descendants of Zabulon the same word the same word from the Lord he speaks blessings according to the word of God later Joshua allocates these people are the same place near the sea territory. Years later, Isaiah prophesies the coming of Messiah dwelling in this city, starting his ministry in this place. 700 years later, Isaiah prophet is fulfilled. Every city, every nation has a purpose. Did you know that? Every nation Every city has a calling and a purpose. Every person has a calling and a purpose. So you are not here by accident. Some people wait and they say, we wait and see what the life brings. What the life brings. <laughs> A person who is in God, do not wait and see what the life brings. Because the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. The plans to prosper you and to give you hope in the future. The Bible says that if God knew you, he knew before the foundation of the world. Of the, of the world. He knew you before the world was created. He declares the end from the beginning. God declares the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. That's why when you go back to the scripture, when you go back to that scripture, that prophet, um, Matthew 4, 16. When you go to, let's just see it. Matthew, you know, let's go back to the scripture. That scripture. Matthew 4, 16 says, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great, have. He doesn't say, they will see. Isaiah is prophesying, speaking the coming of the Messiah. And he says, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great, a great light. And for those dwelling in the region, in, a sh in shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Has. See, when a prophet word is spoken, see, it is done already in the spiritual realm. When Isaiah was prophesying the birth of Jesus Christ, he says, unto us, the child is what? Is born. It's not, he did not say he will be born. To each, see, he was seeing 
in the spirit a child being born already. He could see, he would see that. It's not yet manifested, but he could see it. So when he said to us, a child is born, he could see already the child being born. Now, when he, he prophesied about the coming of the Messiah in this place, he said the people dwell in darkness have seen the light. He saw already Gentiles, people, Capernaum, have seen what? The light. So already God had ordained that already. God has ordained our lives. He knows you. And he has a good plan for you. That's why I say he declares the end from what? From the beginning. Now, I hear people say, because no, God knows my plans, it will happen. He will do what he wants. He will do what he wills. If it's his will, it's fine. He will do what he wants. Let me tell you, it's true. He, do, he does what he wants, but you have your part to play. He says, verse, verse Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, verse 12, which says, then you will call upon me. You will. There's a condition that. You will call upon me. And you come and pray to me. And I will hear you. When you read 13, so then I will hear you and you answer. I know the plans I have for you. Let me tell you, you can dwell in the same place and delay your promise you know, and delay and be stagnant because of not knowing the season and the timing and the will of God. Jesus understood and knew what was spoken. Daniel had to seek the Lord and pray because he realized, actually later he realized that the time, the time for them to return has arrived, no, had arrived. Timing. So the Bible says, seek. Therefore, always seek God for God's guidance in whatever you do. Always see God's guidance in whatever we do. When I say pray, seek God. It's very important that you seek God in prayer. Things are done in the spirit before they are revealed in the natural. Did you know that? Things are done in the spirit. To us, the child is born. It was done. God had ordained. It was waiting for the right time. But it was done. Now, God has a purpose for your life, has ordained your life, but he says, you come, you seek me. Now, seeking is prayer, but also seeking is doing the will of God. That's why I say also align yourself with God's purpose. You have to align always every day in your walk, in your, whatever you do, you have, must be always be aligned with God's purpose, with God's word. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. We're not about seeking God. Seek God in prayer for your purpose, for your will. Know the time, know the season, but also always align yourself. Do God's will every day. When it's align yourself, live according to God's word. I know the plans I have for you. Says the Lord, says the, Lord the plans to prosper and give you hope. Now, there are times that we are out of God's purpose and plan. If you have not received Christ as a personal savior, always you're out. When you come to him, you're back on the track. 
and he starts guiding you. And as a believer, it's good to know time and season. As a believer, it's very important that you walk. You walk in obedience to God's word every day. In whatever you do, every decision you make, that you allow God to guide you. You allow and seek God. Hallelujah. Let's go to point number two and see the message. I was just talking about the recipient of the message. Now, let's see about the message that Jesus preached. The message of the kingdom. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, from that time, which time? From that time, which time? When he moved now from Nazareth, comes to this place where he establishes ministry. He starts his ministry, he launches his ministry. And from that time onwards, his message was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Actually, it's the same message John preached. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Jesus started his ministry by preaching the word. Very interesting. It's very important. Jesus did not start with the miracles. Do you know that? Jesus is a miracle worker. <laughs> when he comes, he does not start performing miracles. He starts teaching, preaching the word. Actually, he preached later. He started teaching about the kingdom. But here, he proclaimed the message. He declared the message. And that word, because he preached the word, the word brings light. The word of God brings light. People could not receive forgiveness of their sins without the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word. Now, there's no way you can receive anything from God without faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. People could not repent unless the, the word is spoken. Now, these were people in darkness. And the word came, came as a light. The word of God comes to us as light. And it lightens our mind and our heart. He started with preaching. And this was his message. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, the word repentance means think different. Change your direction. Think different. Have a, a, a different perception. Turn the, your direction. That's repentance. So, when you realize that I'm a sinner, when you realize that I've done wrong, you repent. But also you're saying, I'm turning. I am changing. So Jesus was preaching to people. Jesus preached and saying, repent. Means change from your ways. Turn to God. Leave your evil ways. Turn to God. Then, because the kingdom of God is near, is at hand. What is kingdom? The kingdom is rule and reign. Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God on earth. Now, when you, we, we read from the book of Mark, chapter 12, 34, there's a word here. He says, the kingdom of heaven is near. Here he says it's handy. The same word, it's near. The Bible says in Mark 12, 34, and when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. You remember the story of a lawyer, a Pharisee who came to Jesus and asked him about the greatest commandment. And Jesus tells him to love God with all your heart, with all your soul and strength. And after this man 
respond to Jesus. He just said, you have answered well, wisely. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Then in Luke 17, Luke 17, verse 20-21, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. No, will they say, look, here it is, or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst of you. <laughs> I want to see to you to understand the kingdom of heaven. Pharisees were asking about the kingdom. They were talking about the physical kingdom, the kingdom of this world. And Jesus says, no, you cannot see it. The kingdom is here. The kingdom, other translations say, the kingdom is within your heart. What do we mean? Jesus came to establish God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth. The rule when he's, Jesus is the king because he has the kingdom. And the kingdom is not physical, it's a spiritual kingdom. When he came, Jews thought he has come, the Messiah will come to liberate them, set them free because they were oppressed by Roman, Romans. But he says, my kingdom is not of this world. Now, there are two kingdoms. You have the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. Now, you cannot be in between. You cannot be in between. <laughs> when you have not received Christ as your personal savior, you have not repented. The kingdom of God is just near you, but you have not received it. <laughs> You know, this man, the kingdom of God is near you, but you have not received it. You are still operating or living under the kingdom of Satan. Now, this is a strong word, but that's truth. When you have not received Christ as your personal savior, you are not in this kingdom. You are still operating under the influence of of the kingdom or you live under the influence of the kingdom of Satan. But when you receive Christ as your personal savior, you are, the kingdom is not just near. You receive God reigns in your life, in your heart. He reigns in your heart. And you start operating now, living in this kingdom. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It means seek to do the will of this kingdom. Our heavenly father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done. What does it mean? Your kingdom come. That means, Lord, let your will be done. The things done according to your kingdom. Every kingdom has laws and rules how to, you know, how to operate. Every kingdom has rules, regulations, and how it operates. The kingdom of God has rules and, and laws how it operates. And the laws and rules are here. That's the word of God. Amen. The Bible says... We live in this world, but we are not of this world. Philippians 3, 20 says, 19 and 20, it says that our citizenship is from heaven. Where we await, or where we wait, our Savior to come and take us home. Our citizen, therefore, here we are 
representing the king of God. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those who receive Christ as their personal savior. I'm talking about those who walk, who walk in the ways of God, who walk according to God's word. I'm not, I'm not talking about lukewarm believers. I'm talking about people who have surrendered, people who are believers. You know, there are people, there are some Christian, I believe they're not here, they're not in this congregation, somewhere else, not here. Maybe in Tanzania, Africa, but not here. You can't tell whether they belong to this kingdom or in this kingdom. They try both. They try to be here and try to be here. They have to be influenced by this kingdom and the people of this kingdom of darkness still want to, you know, listen, make up your, if you're, if, if you're here, make up your mind. Live for Christ, for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus brought the kingdom of heaven on earth. And the kingdom is in your heart. That's why you are a Christ ambassador. We are called Christ ambassadors. Ambassador for who? For this kingdom. That means wherever you go, you have to represent this kingdom and the values of the kingdom of God. You have to instill the values of the kingdom of God wherever you are. And how do you do it? First, you leave them. You live as ambassador. You live according to your home country, which is heaven. Yes, you are employed with that company. Good. But you leave the values of God's kingdom, wherever you are. And I leave those values, people, we know that you're different. We know that you belong to another kingdom. First Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous night. You are, hallelujah, you are, you are. It's very important, believers, to know who you are. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a kingdom. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we, God has chosen us. God has chosen you. And you have a priesthood ministry. That, what does that mean? That's why we worship him. That's why we serve him. We worship him with the offering, with um, songs, prayer. That's priesthood ministry. But also a nation. When you read... 10, verse 10, that we've been called to declare his praises, to declare his goodness. So, we're Christ ambassadors, we are God's nation, and God has given us a mandate to declare of his goodness. And knowing that we are a royal priesthood, we are a nation, we should know how to live. We should know how to live. People who come from a royal family, they don't live like any other people. They have the way they carry themselves. Even the way they eat is different from everybody else. They are trained even how to eat. <laughs> they can't eat fast, you know, like they, they, they have manners. Even of eating. <laughs> they don't go anywhere. What about us, people of God? 
We don't live in a how. Know your identity. Know who you are. The way you carry yourself. The way you speak. The way you treat people. The way you treat your husband. The way you treat your wife. The way you treat your children. The way you treat your fellow workers. The way fellow believers. How you speak. You don't speak anyhow because you are a child of God. You are special. Amen. We know who you are. You carry yourself. Behave. You don't go anywhere. You don't eat anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. You eat. You don't eat anything. <laughs> you don't say anything because you live by the word of God. You speak according to the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are special. Jesus came, as I conclude. He said, repent and receive the kingdom. I will conclude saying to us, to receive the kingdom of God. God to reign in your life. The step number one is what? Is repent. Which means change. Open your heart. Change your ways. If you've been living a life that not please God, you know your heart. The kingdom of God is near. Actually, when you open up your heart, Christ comes into your life and he reigns in you, in your life. Repent. 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 Align your life with God's purpose. Always. If you're not doing things that, you know, not pleasing God, align your life with God's purpose. But also, preach the message of the, of the kingdom of God. Preach the message. You see, we can preach the message of the kingdom or we can preach religion. <laughs> People exalt their denominations. People exalt their religion. Listen, we are supposed to exalt, to preach the message of the kingdom for people to know God. We, you must strive to see the kingdom expanding, God's work expanding. That's why we give offering. We give offering because of the kingdom of God. We want to see the kingdom of God expanding, people coming to Jesus. People knowing God. People coming from the, the, the darkness, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Jesus Christ. Who, and who is the king? We have to preach. We have to share. We are Christ ambassadors. Wherever we go, share. Talk about the good news of the kingdom. When Jesus preached and finished, he said, now I send you. Go into the world. Preach the gospel. And the preaching you don't have to have a speaker, have a crusade. No, you can share the message of the kingdom. Do you believe in your product? Do you believe in the gospel? That it works? Let me tell you, if you believe in it, if it has changed you, you believe in it, if it has changed you. If Gospel has changed you. Yes, but it has not changed you. Today, believe it. It will transform you. Because you cannot share what you don't have. But let me tell you, I want to encourage you. When you share Jesus, when you talk, share the love of Christ, it's powerful. It is powerful. Your work is just share. Share the seed. Share share. They might receive it or not, but just share. It's powerful. When you share, the Holy Spirit goes and transforms the lives of people. Share the message. Talk to people. Tell them God loves you. Jesus loves you. One word, two words. Start sharing. You know, and you see God work in the lives of the people. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. Amen.